This video is to show you about how to solve a system of equations. Unlike what we did in chapter four, which was all linear, now we're gonna solve systems that have multiple function families. So my first example, I have a quadratic and a linear family. If I did a rough sketch, this parabola would look like this, and this would be a decrease in line. So when you're solving a system, what you're really looking at the graph is, where do they actually intersect or cross at? And sometimes you get whole, whole numbers and sometimes you might get irrational roots or something like that. So what I'm going to share with you today is how to solve these systems algebraically. So we're going to use actually one of the methods we talked about earlier in solving systems, and that was the equal value method. So if this equation equals y and this equation equals y, we're just going to go ahead and make these two function families equal each other. And then you simply want to backtrack. And I want to make it equal to zero so I can actually factor or I could use the quadratic formula or whatever to solve this quadratic. So I'm going to go ahead and move this linear equation over by doing the opposite of both. And when I'm done doing that, I have the equation x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. Now you can use any of those methods we talked about to solve a quadratic. You could factor, complete the square quadratic formula. As I look at this one, this one is actually factorable to x minus four and x plus three. So if I wanna find out when this equals zero, one answer has to be negative three and the other answer is four. Now the thing you have to be careful of is you're not done. These are just the x values to make this true. So what you have to do is then you have to find the y value. So these are the two x answers. So we're trying to find these two coordinate points here. So this one obviously makes sense. It's in the negative three and this one's in the positive four area. So what you do to find the y value is you just put four into this the equation for x. So if I do this top one, this, this one right here, I would do two times four plus two and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. Now I can check the same thing on the top. If I put in 4, 4 squared minus 3 times 4. So 4 squared is 16. Negative 3 times 4 is minus 12. 16 minus 12 is 4. And 4 minus 10 is negative 6. It works for both. So then we know that's the solution of a system because it makes both equations true. And do the same thing for the second one. I put negative 3 in for x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6 plus 2 would be 8. If I put it in the, the top one here. Negative 3 squared minus 3 times negative 3 minus 10. Well, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18 minus 10 is 8, so it works. So these would be my solutions. These are the two points of intersection. I did that all algebraically without having to graph. Um, we're going to do one last example here. This time I have two quadratic equations. So obviously I would have one going up and one going down, so they're going to have two points of intersection, most likely. So again, Using equal value, I'm going to make the first equation equal the second equation. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you move to make to, to, to make it equal to zero, but I usually like to keep my x squared positive. So I'm going to move this whole equation over to the other side by doing the opposite of everything. So when I do that, this side would equal zero. And over here, I would have 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Now, again, you could factor this, complete the square or whatever to solve this. This time, I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. So it's the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 7, plus or minus b squared. So negative 7 squared is 49, minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So now if I do inside the square root sign, which is the discriminant, 
4 times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24. 49 minus 24 is 25. The opposite of negative 7 is 7, and 2 times 2 is 4. Now the square root of 25 is 5. So now I have 7 plus 5 is 12, divided by 4 is 3. So that would be one of my x values. And then if I do 7 minus 5 is 2, divided by 4 is 0.5. So I have my two x values, 3 and 0 0.5. So I'm going to put those in for x in my original equations to find out my y value. So if I put 3 in the bottom, 3 squared is 9. 2 times 3 is 6, 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 10 would be 25. And I should check to make sure that works on the top as well. So 3 squared is 9, that makes it negative 9. 3 times 9 is 27, 27 minus 9 is 18, plus 7 is 25, it works. So I know that would be one solution for my system because it makes both equations true. For the last one, I'm going to put in half for x, half half squared is one-fourth, half times two is one, so one-quarter plus one plus ten would be eleven and a quarter, or eleven point two five. Now do the same thing up on top, that would be negative one-fourth, half of nine is four and a half, Four and a half minus a quarter is 4.25 plus 7 is 11.25. So again, these would be my two points of intersection if I graph the probabilities made by solution, my points of intersection.